let's go to the sage of advice when it comes to the importance of having a team as an artist. If you miss this point, then you're missing out on life. Let's listen to this quote. It's a group effort, man. It, it, it's a team, man. If you don't have a team, your hustle is isolated, man. It, it's only what you can bring to the table. Most deals that them, that come about, other people can go get those deals. You don't have to be the only one to go get those deals, man. You 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 gotta have you gotta you gotta have you gotta have a team with people who can put on a suit and go talk to people. You know, everybody can't put on a suit and go talk to people and make them believe. You gotta have those guys. You gotta have those guys to protect you from all this this this, this rap this rap this madness in the street. It's just, it's, that's just reality. If you don't. If you think you can do it by yourself, you just can't, bro. You, 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 you'll fall. Wise words. Wise words, man. They might not always be wise, but those are, those are clearly wise in my opinion. Yeah. You know, what I like about this so much is the way that he talked about it, right? We can talk about one topic a million times over, but if it's introduced in different perspectives with a different point made, I still find a lot of value in it. And I don't hear people say it from that angle a lot where of course we know you want more people on your team because you can only do but so much work in terms of the time that you have all right cool we get that but just the ability to say no some people just can't do some things and mm-hmm. others can i might not be able to put on a suit and convince these folks all right because i might not speak the language of the boardroom or i might not have a look you know, call it discrimination or whatever you will, but I might not have a look that's as convincing. They might think, hey, man, this this rapper guy don't really know what he talk about. He's stupid and I don't really trust him. But then you can have somebody be a representative that talks in that language, looks the part, and they're able to convince him. Mm-hmm. Everybody believes that guy. Everybody yeah. believes that guy. And that's also the value in a lot of times of a manager, right? Because people see conversations with managers different. It's hard to completely explain but you know artists get a stigma being maybe over sensitive or they just know that you are the one who's being impacted because you look you are the product in many ways right so let's just say it's before a show and there's some bad news to deliver better to deliver it to the manager than the artist because the artist still has to go before him right after that right so i give it to the manager the manager ha- handles everything and now the artist isn't distracted from doing whatever they need to do right so there's a lot of angles um, and reasons why it's best to have team members. But that idea literally, hey, some people can, can do this. And some people can't do that. I can't, I can't do everything is not from a legitimate, legitimate capacity standpoint, but from a straight up, hey man, like different strokes from different folks. Some people got talents and, and some people just have a different energy that speaks to other people in a, in a different way and mm-hmm. makes certain things happen. Like that's a, a true part of it as well. So some artists and managers are just waiting for lucky moments when the ones who are killing it have systems to consistently take artists to another level over and over again. And if you want to see what that looks like, we just did a collab where we not only show the system that we use that's resulted in billboard hits, some of the biggest viral moments on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube, but also we got J.R. McKee to break down how he took an artist from zero to one of the biggest hit songs of 2022 and getting a Grammy in January of 2023. This is recent stuff, not old tactics. If you want to check it out, go to www dot brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. Don't forget the WWW or it won't work because JR gets into the details of looking at the data, decisions that got made, how much content got created and how they adjusted the content over time for different parts of the campaign. This is real behind the curtains type of stuff. So again, go to www.brandmannetwork.com slash Grammy. If you want to check this out and apply it to yourself back to the video. Yeah. Yeah, and that that to me was my favorite part was that he didn't touch on it from the typical music industry positions, right? Like you need a manager, you need this because I think I think on one side of it, artists are used to hearing that, right? You need the business side of it, yeah. And then two, there's always going to be an artist out there who is an anomaly where it's like, hey, I didn't need a manager to make it, or I didn't need a, I didn't need these different business entities. But we he's just could, like you said, basically saying is like, hey, that golden team member for you may not be a specific position that you're used to hearing about. It may just be someone who can who fits the mold of your business that you can't do for every reason, even if you are doing it, right? And I've seen that 
come and go in many ways, you know, from the artists that were doing their own cover arts and, you know, they were cool when they were doing it, but they got a graphic designer and, and then they're better, right? It's like, you know, you could do it, but this person could do it better than you and if they could speak their language and do things that you couldn't. So, yeah, I think that's important. And then, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I think that it's hard to explain to artists until they get into the fold and start realizing, like, what exact team members do you need? You know, because I even tied it to security. You need someone to protect you from, well, I'm, I'm we're just going to say you're talking about security, right? Tied it to security, right? You yeah. you're someone that, even something as simple as just having someone to protect you from the lifestyle that you're building for yourself. Yeah. He is a team member that most artists probably wouldn't even think about until they get to the point to where their success has created a problem for them, right? And then you realize, like, you know, the first time you have 30 kids bum rush you out after the show, that's when you're like, oh, shit, maybe I do need security. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, them little motherfuckers got back here too quick. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like there was no real resistance between them and back here where I was at. Maybe I should think about getting secure that. Now I see that that's that guy or girl is important for my operation. So, you know, some of that is just growing pains. I think like that like so I would tell artists like a lot of times building your team is just you experiencing your growing pains and then thinking really critically about who to find to solve this problem. Damn, I keep having this issue. I try to fix it five different ways. Two of them were terrible. Three I just didn't enjoy doing. I need a person for this. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is, I need to find somebody to fill this role for me. Right. Right. And the, the caption on this one was without a team, your hustle is isolated, mm -hmm. which is something that I feel like a lot of indie artists don't realize they create. And there's levels to it. There's the indie artists trying to DIY, do everything literally themselves. And then you have some that have some friends. They get a few more people on their team, but there's still this ego that's keeping them from being in legitimate partnerships or letting go of some things. They have to do everything themselves and figure out everything, not because it's necessarily the best long run for any legitimate reason, but sometimes there's just that ego of, I have to do it myself. And that's one thing that the indie side is, is breeding in a, a negative way. It's just something to be aware of because part of that blood, that energy is what allows you to accomplish things as an indie, right? But then there's a, becomes a level of it where you have to realize, ah, this is ego, right? Because I don't even want to maximize in this area, right? I want to, I don't know, let's just say, the Russell did like a pay to, what is it? Pay what you want. Pay what you want restaurant experience, right? Yeah. Imagine if the Russell was like, well, shoot, I'm going to have to create a restaurant, build a legitimate restaurant, you know what I mean? and run a restaurant just so I can do this experience versus, hey, there's a restaurant that already exists. And then I partner with them to create an experience, right? It's a different type of thing because it doesn't make any sense, but maybe going round up and owning everything makes more sense. If you truly say, hey, I'm trying to build an investment and have my own restaurant brand and you're building something long-term, that's different. So you have to pick and choose when you do I lean in and take control of more, or do you partner? If I'm just trying to run up the money, a lot of times it doesn't make sense to like own everything and do everything from ground zero, right? Because I'm just trying to maximize, get as much money, visibility, maybe flip the visibility and all that, but I don't need to own this thing because I'm only doing it for this isolated experience. Yeah. So like that's something that comes to mind when you think about teams and how you go away, uh, go about partnerships as well. 